Today we're going to try to recreate the look of the characters in Inside Out in Blender. And as always, all source files will be available to download below. Uh, this will be part one of the tutorial. Next week I'll put up the second part, which will be trying to recreate her hair. Now before we try and figure out if it can be done, it'd be important to see how it was done. And you won't need to interrogate a Pixar artist to figure this out. I recall an interview of Pete Docter, where he actually hinted to how the unique look of the characters was made. They don't feel real. They feel like you could put your hand through them. Yeah. So they're a fog with these little frontward facing disks that, that look like uh, roiling atoms or something. Yeah. Now that description is helpful enough to get us started. Let's go. Um, we're going to try to recreate Joy's shader onto a sphere. Please note that the specific settings of this will vary depending on the shape and size of the object. We're going to position our light and camera just to give us something good to work with. So I've been playing around with a new setup of having the render display in the top corner. If your computer can handle it, you can try this. If not, then don't have to. So we're going to add a new material to the sphere and call it Joy. Then we'll need to pull up the node editor so we can start diving into the actual settings. So we're going to ignore the fuzziness for now and try recreating the base of Joy's skin. Now it does look like it is subsurface scattered, so that's a good place to start. We're going to add a principled shader, turn on the subsurface, and find a good shade of yellow. But you'll notice there's very little shadows on Joy. She's constantly glowing. So we're going to try mixing this with an emission shader of a similar color. We can actually go ahead and try copying this. We do want the setting of this to be enough that we can see volume and shape, but not so much that it looks like she's not glowing. I feel like this is one of those memes of people that try a recipe for something that looks amazing and then it turns out looking horrible. But there's more horrible where that came from, we're just getting started. Uh, so next thing we notice if we're taking a close look at Joy is that she always has a pink rim light on one side of her, like literally always. So let's create this next. We're going to do something similar that we did with there, with a mix shader and emission, except this time the emission is going to be a bright pink. But what we want is for the pink emission to only be on this side of the screen. We're going to need to bring in two things. One is a geometry node, and the next one is a normal node. Attach the normal to the normal, and attach that little dot setting to the factor. And if we start to adjust this, we can change which parts of this is showing yellow and which parts is showing pink. Right now there's way, way, way too much pink though. We're gonna need to add a converter color ramp and try pushing back the pink until it's just a little bit. Then we're going to adjust our normal, maybe even bring up our blackness to something that looks good. Now we might need to come back and tweak these settings, but for now let's get a start on those particles. Now if you recall he said, Fog with these little frontward facing discs. What we're going to do is we're going to add a plane. You can just sit it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to set this plane to always be facing the camera by pushing Control T and adding a Track 2 constraint. Now this plane is clearly rotated the wrong way. We're going to push R, X, X to get it rotating on its local X axis and then type in 90, negative. So that way this plane is always going to be facing the camera no matter what. Now we're going to add a particle system onto our sphere and down under Render, we're going to enable it to render as an object and the object is going to be plane, and enable rotation. Now you may have noticed there is that billboard setting. However, I can't seem to get it to work. So we're just going to go with this. Now we're going to scale these up a little bit to see what we're doing. So as you can see, this is always going to be facing the same direction that this plane is, which means that you'll need it, the plane to be generally in front of the camera. You can actually get away with sitting it slightly off camera. It doesn't really make a perceivable difference, but these particles are always going to be facing us. Next, we're going to play around with the settings of these particles. Under field weights, turn off gravity. We don't want them to be falling, and gravity has a way of doing that. Turn down its initial velocity to something much gentler, and adjust its lifetime. Uh, we don't want it to look like it's constantly shedding. What we're going for is a kind of fizzle. A fizzle type effect looks good. We're getting pretty close. What we're going to do now is turn up the random size of this, because we want these particles to create a cloud-like effect. Now this part's going to get a little taxing on your computer. We're going to turn up the number of this to a lot more. Uh, we may need even more than that. In my initial render, I did uh, 60,000, I believe. Next up is the materials. Now, if we were to render this right now, it would look downright atrocious, because we don't have a particle material set up. We're going to create a new material, call this particles. We're going to add an emission shader, a mix shader, and a transparent shader. Now, to see this, we're going to just draw a little box. We're just going to render this over our parent object to fine-tune it and get it how we're wanting it. And what we want is for it to be a fuzzy circle. So bring in a texture and a gradient texture. Attach the color or factor to the effect. It doesn't matter too much in this scenario. Um, we're going to set that to spherical instead of linear. Now to be able to control this, we're going to do what we did before and add a color ramp. 
You notice that's not quite what we're going for. We'll need to input the mapping to this. So we're going to do what we did before and bring in a texture coordinate. And we're going to set it to object. We can adjust this around to find it. And there we go. It looks like it's congregating over on the right side. Just get something like that. That's fine. Do any of these look better? I'll just go with that. Uh, this is clearly looking like a quality production. That was sarcasm. This is hard to look at. Now for the color of these particles, we could just click here and set it to nice yellow. But if you look at Joy, you will notice that just like she has that pink rim light, the particles over on one side of her face is actually pink. So since that's not going to work, we're going to need to use another color ramp. Set one side to be yellow and the other side to be pink. And we're going to need to bring in two nodes. One will be a pretty amazingly underrated node, the particle info node. And the next will be another normal. We're going to attach the dot to the factor. And what we're going to need right here is this little location box. This little box will tell the shader to use the location of the particle to affect the color. So we're going to slide around our normal node until it lines up with the pink. And um, we may want to push this yellow back a bit more. And that's looking all right. Now one more thing. Whenever these particles die, uh, they'll just pop away and that will look horrible. So we're going to set it up so that they fade away instead. Just duplicate the mix shader, duplicate the transparent shader, and bring that into there. And for the factor of this one, we're going to use that particle info box again. Duplicate that, and just use a nice little math node setup. We're going to set that to divide, and divide the age of the particle by the lifetime of the particle. Then we're going to bring that number into the deciding factor of when these are going to fade away. So if we were to mute this node and have a look at what the particles were doing, you can see whenever they, whenever they disappear, they just snap away. And that's kind of jarring and distracting. But with this particle, now they gently fade away, which is more what we're going for. So let's give this a test render to see where we're at. So we are almost ready to start compositing, but before we do, there's one other step we need to do. What we're going to do is take our sphere and duplicate it and move it on over to layer two. Now over on layer two, we're going to get rid of that material for this duplicate sphere. We're gonna to go to the modifiers and get rid of that particle system. Now to create an additional variety of rim light effects, we'll have a blank canvas to work with. What we're going to do is add a rim light on the left and right side of it and layer the lighting information of this together. We're going to position it nicely and duplicate the sun lamp. Take that first one and turn up its strength a bit. And then we're going to add a duplicate layer. So this first layer, let's name base. And we're going to have it use only that first layer that we made, that the particle one. And we're going to set it to exclude layer two. And then we're going to add another layer. And this one's going to be the rim light. Now you might be wondering why we're going to the extra trouble of doing this, and essentially it's for control. I tried rendering the first ones out with normal passes, but it actually wasn't that effective, and I found that doing this made for a surprisingly better result. Now hold down shift and select that first layer, and I think I'm actually going to turn up these particles before I hit render. Be sure to save often, and hit render. So the goal of this material is that we do not want to see a solid line. Uh, this is not supposed to look like a solid object. So using this rim information, we're going to blur it and turn it into a glow effect. I'm going to do this in two layers and add it together. I'm going to turn down the brightness on the second one. I'm going to try using a color ramp and bringing up the blacks. We mute this, we can see what's going on. So the gradient was like that, and I just bumped it up so that we have a little bit of rim. Then we're going to add these two together using a mix node. Then we're going to tint this yellow using the color setting. Set it to something slightly yellow, we'll be able to adjust it. Then we're going to pull in our image and set it to add. Maybe bump up that blur a little bit. Then we're going to do the same factor, except with the original image itself. Turn that add down a little bit. I think the particle system still needs adjusting. If we turn down its emitter velocity, the particles will go less a distance. I think the scale needs to go down slightly, the randomness all the way up. And then let's try doubling it. Ending this at something crazy. That's not crazy. This doesn't seem to be looking right. Oh, my bad. I left out a zero. It's not 6,000, it's 60,000. There we go, and that is, yeah, that's way too many. Maybe set the end to be 100. And let them spread out a little bit more. Be sure to save our file, and then let's add a composite node so we can give this a test render. Uh, but that's not the only thing Joy has. If you notice, in addition to the yellow glow that she has, she also has an additional blue glow behind her constantly. So we're going to add that right now. We can take our render layer and one of these color nodes and borrow a viewer and change the color of this to be a blue. Borrow a blur and set it much wider. Something like that. 
And we're going to do the same two layer effect that we did with our yellow rim light. So this one we're going to make a slightly different shade of blue, a slightly lighter shade of blue. We're going to blur it by less, and then we're going to add them together. Actually, desaturate that a little bit to get this lighter gradient going inward. Now we need to set this behind this. So in order to get the blue behind the yellow, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to turn on the transparency render, which is in the render panel right here under film, and then give that another render. We're going to need another mix node and make sure that it's actually set to mix. Then we're going to put these two in together and enable this little button right here, which says to use the alpha. And it looks like that's messed up, so we're just going to reverse those. And there you go. However, we did lose our yellow glow. So we're going to add one more mix node, duplicate this one. And this time we're going to set it to add and we're going to bring back our yellow rim light, which is right here. And just pop that back into place. Now it's just about there. If you notice these little dark patches, that's simply a matter of the light paths not bouncing around enough. So you can just bump up this number right here until they disappear. And lo and behold, they're gone. Uh, once you tweak here and there with the settings, uh, you can get a result that's not that far off from the movie. Uh, now this is only part one of the tutorial. Next week we're going to try to recreate that hair of hers, because it also has a unique look to it. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that.